Sound Design. So why would you ever want to point your subs at the wall? Um, I did this on a show yesterday and people were asking me about it so I thought it would be fun to make a video about it just to make sure I understood what I was actually doing and to see if I could explain it as well. So um, here's the sub array that I used yesterday on a show and it was pointed at a wall but first let's talk about if it was pointed um, in the normal direction which would be at the audience into the room, right? So I'm going to take away these center lines and let's just measure here the distance from uh, the sub to the microphone. And we can see that that's 23.42 feet. Um, and now if we look at the distance of the reflection from this back wall, it would start here at 6.5 feet head back to the wall and then from the wall it would bounce forward and hit the microphone. Meanwhile, our direct sound from the subs took this path and hit the microphone. So I'm curious what is the difference in distance? What's the added path length for this guy in red? So when I put my cursor here, I can see that that's 6.5 feet. 6.5 times 2 is 13. So I'm going to say that this added distance here, round trip, is 13 feet. And from that distance, I should be able to estimate the comb filter. So if we know 13 feet, then uh, 1130 feet per second speed of sound divided by 13 is going to give us a peak at 87 hertz and a first dip then at 43.5 hertz. So I'll write those down over here 87 peak, 43 dip, and I can also estimate 13 feet times 0 0.9 um, that that should be about 11.7 milliseconds. So let's take a look at that. So here's an impulse response without that back wall on. Here's an impulse response with the wall on so we can see the direct sound here at 0 milliseconds and the reflection here at let's say 12.7 milliseconds. Now we said that it was going to be 11.7 milliseconds. So what's happening here? Um, well, I think what's happening here is that the acoustic center of this speaker is actually a little bit out here in front. And that's just based on this calculator from Merlin Van Veen where he says, hey, if you put in these dimensions, which are the dimensions of this subwoofer, the 700 HP, then and you know that it's uh, two 18-inch drivers, then that acoustic center is going to be about 286 millimeters. And I believe this is in front of the sub. I need to read his documentation again. So 286 millimeters is about one foot. So I think that's what accounts for our extra millisecond of delay here. Um, and the reason I'm even talking about this is that it can be really hard to look at subwoofers and low frequency energy on an impulse response. So we have this benefit in MAPXT, but in the field, that would be hard to do. So in red, this would be with no walls on. In blue, this is with walls on. And what were our predictions? So um, 87 hertz peak, 43 hertz dip. So we've definitely got a dip here, but it looks like it's a little bit farther down. We've got a peak here, but it also looks like it's a little bit farther down. But if we look at the impulse response here and say that this is 12.7, then 500 divided by 12.7 is 39. 39 and let's say 79. So that's more accurate, right? There's our dip at 39, there's our peak at 79. So that's how I estimated the comb filter, just knowing the distance from that wall. 
And let's see what would happen if I turned it around. So now I'll face the rear direction. Okay, and back is similar distance from the microphone, but now we have a shorter round trip. So what did we learn? That the acoustic center is a little bit in front. If the grill here is at 3.82 feet, uh, then the acoustic center is a little bit in front. So I'll say three feet. Then the round trip is going to be six feet, right? From here to here, and then from here back to here. six foot round trip. So now we can use our speed of sound again, 1130 divided by six, 188 divided by two, 94. So this was the choice that I was making in the field. I could face the subwoofers to the front and have my first dip at 43 hertz, which I didn't want because that's right in the area where I really want the subwoofers to be providing support because uh, there's nothing else down there. The car that I was using don't go all the way down there the way I want them to. Um, or I can have my first dip at 94 hertz. So I decided to go that direction, face the subs to the rear, move that first dip up a little bit higher. So let's just confirm uh, And that. let's say where are we expecting that late arrival to be? So we said six feet, right? So I'm expecting a late arrival at 5.4 milliseconds. Okay, now they're kind of on top of each other. Um, and now I can see that that reflection is actually arriving here. So that's interesting. And it just looks like a, a bigger peak down here. Okay, so what did I say? 5.4 milliseconds and the truth is um, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's about 5.88 milliseconds, so 500 divided by 5.88. Um, so we should have our first dip at 85 hertz. Let's see if that's actually the case. Okay, super deep dip this time, and that it's hard to tell, but that does look at, like it's at 85 hertz. So my prediction was 94 hertz, and I was off by about 9 hertz. Um, but for an estimation in the field, I think using uh, that calculation can still be really helpful. It got me into the right area. So now looking at these both together, you can see the choice I was trying to make between facing the subs forward, which would give me this result in blue, or rearward, which would give me this result here in brown. So I was choosing between uh, a dip higher up at like 85 hertz or a dip lower down around 39 hertz. So I chose to go with this brown one. No right or wrong here, it's just good to know what results I should be expecting and therefore make a choice about it. So just to review with you how I made that calculation, if you measure from the front of the sub to the boundary, multiply that by two, then you'll get the total path length difference then you can divide the speed of sound by the path link difference. So 1130 divided by uh, 13. And that'll give you first peak, divide that by two, and that'll give you your first dip. And of course, remember that that's an estimate. We noticed that once I actually looked at the impulse response, it was slightly different, but that should give you in the right ballpark. So let me know if you guys have tried this, um, choosing whether or not to point your subs towards a wall for a shorter path link difference. Okay, thanks. Sound design. Yeah.